On behalf of the Dean and Ministry team at Newcastle Cathedral, welcome to a new way of worshipping. As a community gathering from many places, yet one in faith and hope. In these unprecedented times, we are having to learn to do things differently. We hope and pray that these daily reflections will bring comfort, support and a sense of community to all who care to join us. The Lord be with you. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe space, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 to 14. Jesus said to his disciples, What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Peter. Some of us, it would be fair to say, are better at taking risks than others of us. For some, the risky way is exhilarating, exciting. For others of us, the let's just go with it and see what happens mentality is one we might just think plain reckless. Whether we're naturally risk averse or a risk taker, for all of us at present, risk is of course a factor of our lives we're all rightly thinking much, much more about. In fact, we might feel as if there's nowhere where we can go to escape it. As the church today celebrates the life of St Cuthbert, on first hearing, even the gospel reading for the day seems to be talking about risk. There in the story that we have to reflect on today is a shepherd charged with looking after 100 sheep, who by the time we encounter him is in the unenviable position of having lost one of them. Jesus asks, what do we think? What should he do? What would you do? A call for what we now seem to refer to as a dynamic risk assessment. Out of care or fear, or maybe both, go after the one that's lost. Or having 99, think one might just be collateral damage, an acceptable margin of error. The story and the question it poses is, of course, an impossible one. At hazard to guess, it's a question, however many times we've heard it, and Jesus has asked it of us, we still may not know what our answer would be. It's perhaps handy then that Jesus makes it fairly clear what he thinks our answer ought to be. 
Does this shepherd not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search for the one that went astray? Jesus' message is that this dilemma and all that it has to teach us is not about risk at all, but rather duty. At present, everyone, it seems, has an opinion on how we manage the risk of coronavirus. Everyone has an opinion on the extent to which we should practice social distancing, on who should self-isolate and who shouldn't, on when certain actions are or aren't appropriate. This also we are learning, or ought to be, is not about risk-taking or risk aversion, but duty. In life in general, it seems to me that depending on who we are, we all at times use either our natural tendency for risk taking or for risk aversion to get us out of doing what we know deep down we really ought. The sometimes exciting but more often difficult, sometimes unwanted duty that is ours. Today, the church remembers St Cuthbert. We celebrate all that he did in spreading the gift of faith and teaching it to us. But we remember his doing that through deep listening. Through deep listening to the communities of which he was a part of and to the God in whom he trusted speaking in his heart. We remember today Cuthbert living amongst people and in community, but also at times in solitude. We remember Cuthbert, who in the first instance became a prior at Melrose, returning there only when his mentor and friend Boisel, the then prior, was struck during the plague of Justinian. In these days, in all sorts of ways, it seems to me that we're being called back to discovering the joy that is found in undertaking what is our duty, in the going after the one sheep, that one thing that for each of us, we perhaps, we know, we are being called back to in our lives, the endeavour, the task, the responsibility we're finding excuses to shy away from. And in these extraordinary and difficult days, as we listen to what God is saying deep within our heart, with Cuthbert we're also challenged still to listen to the wisdom of God for us in the local, national and global communities of which we're a part. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. God of compassion, Give us the heart of your servant Cuthbert to bring and to be the good news that we proclaim in the communities where we find ourselves this day. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for your people in every land, for your protection upon us, and that you might lead us safely into the future you have prepared for us, whatever that may bring. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit of God, Open our hearts and minds to hear your call upon our lives. 
give us discernment to know the duty to which you call us and courage then to do it. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who called your servant Cuthbert from following the flock to follow your son and to be a shepherd of your people. In your mercy, grant that we, following his example, may bring those who are lost home to your fold. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen christ give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. This has been an early attempt at uploading a daily reflection to encourage our communal prayer life in this time of estrangement. We expect to get better and more creative as time goes by, uploading music, images and using different voices. If you have enjoyed worshipping in this way with us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next upload and click on the link to our website for more information and updates. Thank you.